Everything is possible. It started with a dream. Hello and welcome to our hop today. Um, you are here stamping with Sandra at Sandra Stamp and Craft Studio and I am in Norfolk in the UK. The hop we're taking part in today is the creators of Vlog Hop. So this is, this is the first one with the creators that we've actually done as a YouTube hop. So let me pass you down onto my desk and we will get started and I will be able to show you what I'm going to create with you today. Okay, so we'll just move that one across for you. Today I will be using the Tasteful Touches stamp set that we have here and the corresponding dies that are featured in here. Now I have made, mounted mine on my in my case here and usually I have a piece of card in here to protect them so that if one falls off like it just did, they don't actually cut into the rubber. But because I'm using the stamp set, I've taken that sheet out today. Okay, so this is a new stamp set um, with some gorgeous designer series papers that will be featured in the new annual catalogue, which by the time this YouTube hop goes live, will actually have commenced a couple of days ago. Okay, so this is what I will be using today, and I will be making an impossible card. So it's called the impossible card because it has a twist mechanism. Um, it's a little bit like a magician's um, trick, I think. Just putting that on a piece of grid paper there so you can see it better. I think it's, it's, it's basically, you've got a small square there and a small square here, but how do you manage to get a whole piece in the middle? So if this, is new, if this um, style of card is new to you, all will be revealed as I progress through the card today. Okay, so this is what I will be making. So we're gonna be, start by making a few um, pieces for you. So first of all, we're going to start by cutting the base card. So I am using navy here. Navy is not obviously a, a terribly good choice to have on a, um, on a dark mat. Um, so I've got a piece of grid paper here that I will bring in and out as we need. So I'm gonna be making my um, cuts on here. Um, the sizes here are 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. Okay, and we're gonna be making where these lines are, um, we are going to uh, score through the middle of the card and then we'll be cutting down halfway here and then three centimeters in on the right and the left. Okay, um, I will come over to the measurements on the back later. So let me just grab my score tool. So um, the, this, this measurement here is 10 centimetres. I'll just bring that down a little bit onto the camera. So this is 10 centimetres. So I'm going to be scoring this at 5 centimetres. So I'll just get that lined up on here and make sure that it's all nice and straight all the way down. And that is my score. Oh, that was just jumped out. That is my score line through the middle there. Okay, now I'm going to turn it the other way and I'm going to cut, um, score down, cut down here, sorry, at seven and a half centimetres. So here's my seven and a half centimetres. Now I need the, um, the cutting blade this time. I'm going to bring this up, I'm sliding this up until it is level with where the um, score line through the middle is. I'm pushing that to pierce the card and then I will cut up to the top there. So this piece of card will now have a slit in the middle. Now we're going to turn it round 180 degrees and both of the side measurements are three centimetres. So I'm now going to do the same on the three centimetre line. Now if I was to put it this side and use the three centimetres like you would normally do, you haven't got much to hold that down with. So I tend to use the measurements that are this side on the right hand side of your trimmer. So I'm going to take this over here to the three centimetre line and do exactly the same again. I'm going to bring the blade to the middle of my card, push it down to pierce the card and go up to the top like that. Now, because I want to do the same this end, it's gonna be easier for me to actually flip over the card and do the same on the right hand measurements. So I'm lining up again here at three centimeters. I'm gonna bring the cutter to the middle of the card and then I'm going to score, uh, to cut, sorry, up there as well. So we now have three cuts on my card. Okay, so I'll remove that for the time being. So now I have my piece of card with a score line through the center and my three cuts. So kind of think of it as being a Y because you've got a slight slit slit and another slit there. So now we're gonna fold this back on itself, taking care to keep these edges together. You don't want them splayed apart 
and you want these to be nice and level along the bottom here. So I'm going to just score that along there. Now, the easiest way for me to describe this, if you hold both the outside edges where the score line is through the middle, okay, so your score line is here, and then your right hand, you are just going to twist one piece over and lay it down and then refold these. Okay, and there is our card. We have the top and we have the bottom and that is our, our pieces as they will be. Okay, so we're ready to go now. I'm going to put this to one side um, for the time being. There is our base card basically. It is a single layer card. It doesn't hinge up. This is our hinge. Now it will go flat in a standard A6 C6 envelope, A6 card in a C6 envelope. Okay, so that is our base card. Okay, so for my next step, I want you to make two templates. And this is the reverse of my card with the measurements on there. This is the reverse. And we need to, to be able to have a template that you can draw around. So we're going to cut the two layers to seven by nine and a half centimeters. And the second template, six and a half by nine centimeters. This is giving us the two layers. So if I go back to my card, we're actually gonna be making this L shape here. Um, and then, then we'll cut two of each, the, the white layer and the, the DSP layer. So here is my template. This is the back of my, my card template that I've made. And our layers we're going to cut, we're going to cut the first layer, the white layer, to seven centimetres by nine and a half centimetres. And the second piece, six and a half by nine centimetres. Then each of those we're going to make a score line. Okay, so I've, I've cut these ahead of time for you. So I'll bring on my school tool just so you can see the measurements at the top there. So the first piece we're going to take is along one of the long sides. You're going to score it at four and a half centimetres. So it's four and a half that way. And then we will turn it and we will do two centimetres the other way. So again, turn it and do the measurements on the right hand side. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so where you see the L shape now down here, where your score, your score lines won't show up very well on the, on the card, on the white, we have an L shape here. I've marked the piece I'm going to cut away um, roughly in the right place. So we will take our snips and we will cut along that score line. This is just a template for you. So you're gonna snip to there and then we're going to snip down here Okay, just snip that little piece out. And then we're going to label this with our template. I'll use a pencil. So this is the template layer one. Okay, so that's the first one. So we'll pop that to one side. And then we're going to take the second piece. The second piece is six and a half this way by nine centimeters this way. So again, we're going to do along one of the long sides. We're going to score this time at four centimetres. And then we're going to put turn and score at two centimetres. Now these measurements are half a centimetre smaller than the, um, the ones we did just now. So layer one and layer two, about a half centimetre is a good gap, which is for the US side, a quarter of an inch. So again, Again, you can't see the score lines on here, probably on the camera, but what I'm gonna do is cut away that corner that I know is gonna be a shaded area. So this one here, we're gonna cut away into the corner. The scoring is just a quicker way of doing it. You can just measure it all up with a pencil, draw some pencil lines and cut it out, but um, there's no need really when you can, if there's an easier way to do it, then um, I like to show you the best I can. So now we have our two templates. We have template one, template two, and we have checked to make sure that they overlap nicely. They've got a nice little border going all the way around the outside. So we will cut two of each of those. So two of template one in the white card, whisper white card, and two of template two in the designer series paper. Okay, so we will bring this across here. Um, I have done this one already, so I will bring template one across and I will do a second one. So I've cut my card to the right size, so we know that two of the edges are already cut for us. So the card we started off was with seven by nine and a half. And I like to use a propelling pencil because I find that they are always got a sharp point on them. 
and if it if it, it gets short you can just click another piece of pencil down um, you don't have the the big fat line that sometimes with a pencil you need to sharpen um, all the time so I'm just going to snip these two corners out just like we did on the template so I'm just going to cut these out um, using my paper snips right into the corner and then again right into the corner here and we'll discard that piece we don't need that and we'll do the same with the second piece discard that one if I lay these two back on my template on my card here you will see where we're going with these shapes bring that grid paper back again so you can see better so we have our white layer there this is exactly the same shape but we're just going to turn it around the other way okay so I'm going to adhere those down now let's move that over to the camera so you can see everything so I'll speed this piece of video up it's what you're dreaming of, it's what you're dreaming of. What we love, what we do, makes a difference in me and you. All these years of inspiration and love. Oh, how we live, what we say, and stamping our band is our way. And there we have our base prepared ready. Kind of like starts to look like something once you get a layer on it. So there's our little easel piece there, and that's ready. Now we're going to do exactly the same with the designer series paper. This is the, the designer series paper that I've chosen to use um, for this card. I am just going to go through, we have, this is part of um, the Tasteful um, Touches collection, the suite, and there are 12 different papers in here, um, 12 different designs, so you've actually got 24 because you've got another 12 on the reverse as well. So if I just fan those out for you, um, you can actually see what those lovely papers are. And if we turn it over, obviously I've been using this one. If we turn it over on the back, you've got another lovely array there of, of papers. Okay, so this is from the, the same suite that matches the stamp and dies that I'm using. So now we need our template layer two. Okay, and we need to draw around these shapes on here. So because I've used a, a darker colour, um, it will be harder for you to see on here anyway. Um, and I will just cut these round, um, but I've already prepared two for you. If I was going to draw around this again, what I do is I would, I do want the reverse image, so I would turn those over and put the card here and draw around my template so I could see it easily. But it's important to remember that your finished shape is going, you're going to want to have the one that you actually started your, your master um, layer. Now I have obviously made a second set, so that's the one we, I showed you how to do. So. It um, does uh, look a little bit different on there. Okay, so I have done those two layers ahead of time for us. So just to save some time. So I will adhere these on to here as well for you and fast forward this video. You can do most anything, so just do what you love. Live it, share it, you know. It's what you're dreaming of. It's what you're dreaming of. Now the same um, is said for the uh, bar that goes across here. This is our mechanism. Remember we started off with one flat piece of navy card. We've scored through the middle and made our cuts and we have just made one twist to turn it over like so. So when it's decorated now, you don't need to have that twist um, to show anymore. So we are now going to assemble our layers. So I have cut a uh, a strip of navy card, a, a smaller strip of white, and then another strip of the designer series paper. So I'll just adhere those together for you. You can bet it doesn't matter where you go. You find a friend who does just what they love and lets it show. One card at a time can really change the way we live. Focused on the sharing and the chance we We're going to ad adhere over the front there. Now, because these layers are just strips, I've just cut those end pieces off there so that they're parallel. Okay, so we're starting to look like we're assembling okay here. So I will assemble this on here. I'm going to adhere with some Stampin' Dimensionals. 
Now the dimensionals, I've used, I've turned this over so that you can see where the gap is that we need to leave gap, we will leave um, empty. So I'm going to put one on this end in the middle, and I will use a couple on here just at the ends to support that. I think I might put one in the middle as well. So this is going to adhere here and the, this end as well. So I recommend that you keep your, your um, card on your grid paper here because it's quite easy to actually have these splayed out a little bit and you want to make sure that all your sides are lined up nicely. So I just like to line them up down the sides here and knowing that they are correct as I place this down. Okay, so I'm going to put that roughly in the middle, top to bottom of this section and then the same over this side that in the middle we can follow the lines across on the grid map just to make sure that we are fairly evenly okay so there we go and we've got those layers on now the next stage I needed to cut the topper piece to go the panel to go in the middle here to decorate so I have cut my white piece here my white layer is at four and a half by eight and a half that fits on there and then the DSP I wanted it a little bit narrower than this because it's quite a small area so I've made this one at 4.2 by 8.2 which just leaves it very very um, a narrow border um, and gives us more surface area so I'm just going to attach these two layers together anything is possible it started with a dream a passion made a difference and built a family we've grown strong together you know it's all because Everybody plays a part I love our Tombow because you have that little bit of wiggle room because it's a wet adhesive um, and it has that little slide and you just slide it into place before it finally sets. Okay, so now for the decoration. So for the decoration of my card, I actually use some um, of the, the feathers on here. Um, I was determined, I, was, I didn't know, I wasn't quite sure which one of these two to use. So I've actually, I'm going to show you the feathers first because I've used those in first, second and third generation. And then this one I embossed with using, using the silver powder, silver embossing powder. Okay, so I'm going to stamp some feathers on a scrap of Whisper White card. So I'm going to do three of these. There's my first generation. There is my second generation and nearly did it there's my third generation okay so you actually end up with three different tones of the same ink okay so you've got the first second and third there so I'll pop this away as I finish with it okay so these will now be cut out these are fussy cut the dies that come with this set remember they were um, they were frames not actual shapes so we haven't got the shapes for these now if I cut those into three I would then cut fussy cut those I will show you with the first one how I go very closely to the edge but I use the I make the paper actually move I don't move my scissors I'm using my 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 I'm turning this piece of paper rather than the scissors going in and out I'm turning on one on the blade here and moving as we go okay so you can see me in and out with my paper and you will not want to see me fussy cut three of these and so that's the idea of it and that's how it ends up so I will just move over to the three that I prepared earlier and I'll make another card up later so here are my three images. Now I had a dark one and the lightest one down here. And then I had the medium one, the middle one, coming over the side here. Now I have put some on with foam pads, but the top one is just going to be flat. So that's going to come just across the corner there. And these ones, because these are going to overhang, a little bit I will put a small stamp and dimensional just on the top of the feather so just these tiny ones here I will put one on the top of each one just there and then put glue around the rest Oops. So just put a little bit down the middle there and a little bit down the middle there remove the backing 
and then pop this one just so that that pad is just over the top there and will secure and then the same with this one just take off the pad I think I had a little bit of glue underneath there so things are sticking to it okay and then we'll pop this one just slightly to the side of that okay so that's those so we're kind of coming to, together now so um, the the next piece was the piece of filigree now this was the one that I, I heat embossed and I did the silver embossing powder with um, I'm I have pre-cut one here a pre pre embossed one here but I am going to then cut the words here you are the best now these are embossed with the white embossing powder but I am just going to quickly put this to one side and just show you how I did those so for my embossing, I have a sheet of just um, scrap paper that I've with the I use this one for white, so I don't contaminate the different colours together. And I have my box here, my stamp, stamping up case, and I have all my embossing powders in there. So I have the white that I will use. The silver has already been done, um, but I will take out my embossing buddy and my Versa mark. So the embossing buddy just stops or helps prevent, not necessarily stops, but very much um, helps prevent the powder from sticking where you don't want it to stick. So the Versamark is a clear um, stamp pad. So it's a water, they call it a watermark stamp pad. And so I'm gonna stamp this image on here like so. While I'm here, I'll do two because I'll do one for another card as well. When you've got all your embossing um, products out, to emboss it's always a good idea to actually do more than one at the same time so there's my powder on the actual stamp so I will tip the powder back in the in the container lid on have my heat tool beside me so hopefully it won't be too loud on the camera don't need to waft it I see people doing this you don't don't need to waft it just hold it not too close just close enough just so that um, as soon as the powder starts to melt you can move your heat gun along Okay, and I'll turn that round. Now on the camera, this might look like I'm very close to the mat, but I'm actually quite away from the mat. I'm up to the camera here. So never use the heat gun directly onto your, um, your mat because it will warp it. Okay, and then take a look at it and just check that everything is nice and shiny and white. And there we are, we're fine. So those are two more that I can use. Um, I did this one ahead of time, as I said. So I'm just going to cut this one now. I will bring back on the, the card. And give my little guillotine. I can take that one and say, there we go. So on here, I'm going to trim this down. So I've got my little guillotine here. I'm going to trim this down to the, the widest word. So best is the longest word. So just trim those edges down. Keeping it nice and straight with the words on there. Okay. Now I will cut these into strips. I'm, I'm over the white paper again now, so you should be able to see me, I hope. Leave those out of the way. I'll bring that down a bit. Just bring that in a little bit closer. So I'm cutting these. Um, the snips are are really good. If you've got a longer piece, I would a longer cut, so I would definitely recommend longer scissors. But as these are short cuts, these are fine. And I'm just going to cut these straight through the middle of the words. So the top and the bottom will just be a straight line, and that will be cut there, cut there. There. And there. Now you will find like this the U here, 
you might want to find you just level that one up a little bit on the end. Okay, there's one. Oh, I'll take a little bit off that one. Oh, there we go. A little bit off that one. Not too bad, actually. And best, obviously, is the right one. So you are the best. So they're the pieces that we're going to use. Let me get those out of the way. And then this one is the silver one. I'm going to fussy cut around here. But what you will notice on here with the branches, the branches can actually be split. So I will be fussy cutting this and we'll speed up the video um, so that you can see how I've, I've actually cut the image and then I'll break that down into individual branches. Anything is possible, it started with a dream A passion made a difference, and built a family We've grown strong together, you know it's all for you There we go, and there we're finished. Okay, so now we've cut around the outside. I'm going to take this little branch off. And come down this way. So there's one branch, and there's a little one down here, that one, and then we've got a larger one on here. So that's the third one. So to pop these on here, I chose one to come across on the um, on the top of the, if you can see on the camera. So I chose one to come across on here, but I just wanted to trim that stalk down a little tiny piece. And that will be stuck on with Tombow find it easier to hold it in my tweezers and then I've got hold of it ready for the um, to go down onto the card. So I kept all the stems all together here, but just at different angles. And then the other two pieces I had, one coming upwards that side and then the little one just coming off the edge. Again, leaving all the branches quite close together. Now, the sentiment for the sentiment, I had small, um, the mini dimensionals. I felt were just would be one in the middle two was too many so what I actually use is when you finish with the mini dimensionals so the mini dimensionals here we use the individual dimensionals but then you get left with all the borders along here so this is an older older piece and I'm just going to cut this um, four times I just want four pieces so I'm actually cutting one of those actually divisions for each one and they will go nicely on the back here. So if I pick one up, you'll see them on the back there. So that's just longer than the, the minis. Okay, so they're all out of the way. So the best one I put over the actual feathers, so that will go over here. 
So that's kind of hid the join. So that's going to go just on there. And the other three, put them in the right order. That's the, that's R. So that's U. So I'll start at the top with the U. And I put that as a little bit of a jaunty angle there. And then, that's the wrong order. There we go. We've got the. So that comes at the bottom. So you are the best. Okay, so we're nearly there now. And we have, just get rid of those little pieces of backing. So all we have left is we have some gems. So we've got our rhinestones. And I put three along the bottom here. If you do wish to colour them, you could use our Knight of Navy blend and colour those in um, on the just on the... On the actual, um, I can leave them attached while you're colouring them in. Um, but I, I decided that there was a lot of blue on here, so I actually wanted to leave mine um, clear. So I've put one large one in the middle of the, with the width of the piece coming down there. And then I took two smaller ones and put those one either side. There we go, just get those even. They are twinkling so nicely. Okay, so that's the dimensionals. And last but not least, um, I had a piece of, um, this is our Misty Moonlight, one of the new colours, the in colours. These are the five in colours and the, um, the gingham one on the end there. So I just took a little piece of my um, Misty Moonlight and tied that in a little knot because our theme was a kind of like a, 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 an anything goes today but um, with a male preference if we could. So this one I thought was kind of like, could do a male, um, and that's why I kept it to the navy. I've just cut a knot on there, um, so the knot will go down. I didn't really want a bow for men. So I've just got to find where I put my glue dots, and stick one of the glue dots on the back there. I push them to roll them up into a little sausage, and then just place that down over where the stems all met at the bottom here. Remember I said put the stems together? So I've just put one over there, like so. Okay. So here is my finished card. And you will see that the um, we need to be careful to make sure we don't overhang away from the edges. Um, otherwise, you might struggle to get the card in a standard size envelope. Okay. The, this little piece here is just very, very close to the edge there but we're fine at the moment with nothing thro throwing off the edges. And just to say bye from myself here in Norfolk, and you will be now hopping along to the next person along our route, um, and the details will be in the description at the bottom of this video. Now please like and subscribe, and remember to ring that bell um, by the subscription, um, and then you'll be notified of when my new videos come up. Okay, so bye for now, and enjoy your hop around the rest of the world.